The Voyager Golden Records are two phonograph records that were included aboard both Voyager spacecraft launched in 1977. The records contain sounds and images selected to portray the diversity of life and culture on Earth, and are intended for any intelligent extraterrestrial life form, or for future humans, who may find them. The records are a sort of time capsule. Although neither Voyager spacecraft is heading toward any particular star, Voyager 1 will pass within 1.6 light years distance of the star Gliese 445, currently in the constellation Camella Partalis. In about 40,000 years, Carl Sagan noted that, The spacecraft will be encountered and the record played only if there are advanced space faring civilizations in interstellar space, but the launching of this bottle into the cosmic ocean says something very hopeful about life on this planet. Topic. Background The Voyager 1 probe is currently the farthest human-made object from Earth. Voyager 1 has reached interstellar space, the region between stars where the galactic plasma is present. Like their predecessors Pioneer 10 and 11, which featured a simple plaque, both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were launched by NASA with a message aboard a kind of time capsule, intended to communicate to extraterrestrials a story of the world of humans on Earth. This is a present from a small, distant world, a token of our sounds, our science, our images, our music, our thoughts and our feelings. We are attempting to survive our time so we may live into yours. Topic. Contents The contents of the record were selected for NASA by a committee chaired by Carl Sagan of Cornell University. The selection of content for the record took almost a year. Sagan and his associates assembled 115 images and a variety of natural sounds, such as those made by surf, wind, thunder and animals including the songs of birds and whales. To this they added musical selections from different cultures and eras, spoken greetings in 55 ancient and modern languages, other human sounds, like footsteps and laughter sagans, and printed messages from U.S. President Jimmy Carter and U.N. Secretary General Kurt Waldheim. The record also includes the inspirational message per aspera ad astra in Morse code. The collection of images includes many photographs and diagrams both in black and white, and color. The first images are of scientific interest, showing mathematical and physical quantities, the solar system and its planets, DNA, and human anatomy and reproduction. Care was taken to include not only pictures of humanity, but also some of animals, insects, plants and landscapes. Images of humanity depict a broad range of cultures. These images show food, architecture, and humans in portraits as well as going about their day-to-day -day lives. Many pictures are annotated with one or more indications of scales of time, size, or mass. Some images contain indications of chemical composition. All measures used on the pictures are defined in the first few images using physical references that are likely to be consistent anywhere in the universe. The musical selection is also varied, featuring works by composers such as J.S. Bach interpreted by Glenn Gould, Mozart, Beethoven played by the Budapest String Quartet, and Stravinsky. The disc also includes music by Guan Pinghu, Blind Willie Johnson, Chuck Berry, Kesar by Kirker, Valya Balkanska, and electronic composer Lori Spiegel, as well as Azerbaijani folk music by oboe player Camille Jalilov. The inclusion of Berry's Johnny B. Good was controversial, with some claiming that rock music was adolescent. To which Sagan replied, there are a lot of adolescents on the planet. Quote, the selection of music for the record was completed by a team composed of Carl Sagan as project director, Linda Salzman Sagan, Frank Drake, Alan Lomax, Andrew Yan as creative director, artist John Lomberg, Timothy Ferris as producer, and Jimmy Iovine as sound engineer. The Golden Record also carries an hour long recording of the brainwaves of Andrew Yan. During the recording of the brainwaves, Druyan thought of many topics, including Earth's history, civilizations and the problems they face, and what it was like to fall in love. After NASA had received criticism over the nudity on the Pioneer plaque line drawings of a naked man and woman, the agency chose not to allow Sagan and his colleagues to include a photograph of a nude man and woman on the record. Instead, only a silhouette of the couple was included. However, the record does contain 
Diagram of Vertebrate Evolution, by John Lomberg, with drawings of an anatomically correct naked male and naked female, showing external organs. The pulsar map and hydrogen molecule diagram are shared in common with the Pioneer plaque. The 115 images are encoded in analog form and composed of 512 vertical lines. The remainder of the record is audio, designed to be played at 16 and two-thirds revolutions per minute. Jimmy Iovine, who was still early in his career as a music producer, served as sound engineer for the project. It has been said that Carl Sagan suggested including the Beatles song, Here Comes the Sun, on the record but the record company Emmy, which held the copyrights, declined. However, this was refuted by Timothy Ferris, who worked on the selection with Sagan. The song was never even considered for inclusion. In July 2015, NASA uploaded the audio contents of the record to the audio streaming service SoundCloud. Topic: Images. Topic: Playback. In the upper left-hand corner is a drawing of the phonograph record and the stylus carried with it. The stylus is in the correct position to play the record from the beginning. Written around it in binary arithmetic is the correct time of one rotation of the record, 3.6 seconds, expressed in time units of 0.70 billionths of a second, the time period associated with a fundamental transition of the hydrogen atom. The drawing indicates that the record should be played from the outside in. Below this drawing is a side view of the record and stylus, with a binary number giving the time to play one side of the record, about an hour, more precisely, between 53 and 54 minutes. The information in the upper right-hand portion of the cover is designed to show how pictures are to be constructed from the recorded signals. The top drawing shows the typical signal that occurs at the start of a picture. The picture is made from this signal, which traces the picture as a series of vertical lines, similar to analog television in which the picture is a series of horizontal lines. Picture lines 1, 2 and 3 are noted in binary numbers, and the duration of one of the picture lines, about 8 milliseconds, is noted. The drawing immediately below shows how these lines are to be drawn vertically, with staggered interlace, to give the correct picture rendition. Immediately below this is a drawing of an entire picture raster, showing that there are 512 29 vertical lines in a complete picture. Immediately below this is a replica of the first picture on the record to permit the recipients to verify that they are decoding the signals correctly. A circle was used in this picture to ensure that the recipients use the correct ratio of horizontal to vertical height in picture reconstruction. Color images were represented by three images in sequence, one each for red, green, and blue components of the image. A color image of the spectrum of the sun was included for calibration purposes. The drawing in the lower left-hand corner of the cover is the pulsar map previously sent as part of the plaques on Pioneers 10 and 11. It shows the location of the solar system with respect to 14 pulsars, whose precise periods are given. The drawing containing two circles in the lower right-hand corner is a drawing of the hydrogen atom in its two lowest states, with a connecting line and digit 1 to indicate that the time interval associated with the transition from one state to the other is to be used as the fundamental time scale, both for the time given on the cover and in the decoded pictures. Manufacturing <inaudible> 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 Blank records were provided by the Pyrrhal SA of Cradiel, France. CBS Records contracted the JVC Cutting Center in Boulder, Colorado, to cut the lacquer masters which were then sent to the James G. Lee Record Processing Center in Gardena, California, to cut and gold plate eight Voyager records. After the records were plated they were mounted in aluminum containers and delivered to JPL. The record is constructed of gold-plated copper and is 12 inches 30 centimeters in diameter. The record's cover is aluminum and electroplated upon it is an ultra-pure sample of the isotope uranium-238. Uranium-238 has a half-life of 4.468 billion years. It is possible e via mass spectrometry, that a civilization that encounters the record will be able to use the ratio of remaining uranium to the other elements to determine the age of the record. The records also had the inscription, To the makers of music, all worlds, all times hand etched on its surface. The inscription was located in the takeout grooves, an area of the record between the label and playable surface. 
Since this was not in the original specifications, the record was initially rejected, to be replaced with a blank disc. Sagan later convinced the administrator to include the record as is. <laughs> Journey Voyager 1 was launched in 1977, passed the orbit of Pluto in 1990, and left the solar system in the sense of passing the termination shock in November 2004. It is now in the Kuiper belt. In about 40,000 years, it and Voyager 2 will each come to within about 1.8 light years of two separate stars. Voyager 1 will have approached star Gliese 445, located in the constellation Camella Pardalis, and Voyager 2 will have approached star Ross 248, located in the constellation of Andromeda. In March 2012, Voyager 1 was over 17.9 billion kilometers from the sun and traveling at a speed of 3.6 astronomical units per year, approximately 61,000 kilometers per hour, 38,000 miles per hour, while Voyager 2 was over 14.7 billion kilometers away and moving at about 3.3 astronomical units per year, approximately 56,000 kilometers per hour, 35,000 miles per hour. Voyager 1 has entered the Heliosheth, the region beyond the termination shock. The termination shock is where the solar wind, a thin stream of electrically charged gas blowing continuously outward from the Sun, is slowed by pressure from gas between the stars. At the termination shock, the solar wind slows abruptly from its average speed of 300 to 700 km per second 670,000 to 1,570,000 and becomes denser and hotter. Of the 11 instruments carried on Voyager 1, five of them are still operational and continue to send back data today. It is expected that there will be insufficient energy to power any of the instruments beyond 2025. On September 12, 2013, NASA announced that Voyager 1 had left the Heliosheth and entered interstellar space, although it still remains within the Sun's gravitational sphere of influence. Topic depictions in culture Several works of science fiction, such as the 1979 film Star Trek, the motion picture, the 1984 film Starman and the 2000 film Battlefield Earth feature extraterrestrial intelligences discovering the record and turning their attention to Earth as a result. Among these is included the computer animated television show Beast Wars, which features one of the records as a central plot point in a continuation of the Transformers storyline. Referred to as the Golden Disc, the record is stolen by Megatron and his band of Predakens. The disc is revealed to contain a hidden message left by the original Megatron, instructing his descendants to venture back in time to prehistoric Earth and assassinate Optimus Prime, to change history and ensure a Decepticon victory against the Autobots. In a Saturday Night Live segment next week in review in episode 64 of the show's third season originally aired 1978, Steve Martin's character, a psychic named Kokua, announced that extraterrestrials had responded to the record with the four words Send more Chuck Berry. The recording is a major plot piece of Little Green Men, a season two episode of The X-Files. On Star Trek, Voyager, the greetings from Earth on the Golden Record are sent to Voyager by Rain Robinson in season three, episode eight Future's End. It was also referenced in the 2005 animation known as Fafner in the Azure as being one of the objects that the aliens discover. In 2014, the podcast The Truth produced an episode titled Voyager Found, where the Voyager crash lands on the property of Don and Tad, an alien couple, who decide to play the record. In 2014, composer Dario Marinelli wrote a Voyager concerto for violin and orchestra, which was premiered in Brisbane, Australia in November that year by the Queensland Symphony Orchestra, QSO, and in Stockholm the following April 2015, by the Swedish Radio Orchestra. The QSO, with British violinist Jack Liebeck, performed the piece over several concerts at the Queensland Performing Arts Centre. Each performance was preceded by a lecture by physicist Professor Brian Cox, who talked at length about NASA's Voyager mission, and introduced the concerto. The 30-minute piece, in one single movement, depicts the journey of the Voyager through the solar system, using as references some of the music that is on board each probe. On the Golden Record, an image of the Golden Record cover is printed on the physical CD of Mary Fall's 2014 release Love and Gravity. The 2015 feature documentary Sam Klemka's Time Machine, compares the Golden Record's portrait of humanity to American man Sam Klemka's ongoing self-portraiture. In 1977, the same year that NASA launched Voyager with the Golden Record, Sam started obsessively documenting his entire life on film. 
Sam Klemka's Time Machine, directed by Matthew Bate, premiered at the 2015 Sundance Film Festival. Jim Moray, an English folk singer, released the album Upsetera in September 2016. It contains the track Sounds of Earth in which he interweaves the stories of the production of the Golden Record and the romance between Carl Sagan and Anne Druyan. It refers to the recording of an Eag of Druyan as she thought of Sagan as the sound of someone falling in love. In October 2016, the podcast Science Friday featured an updated, crowd sourced version of the Golden Record, which included, among other entries, I Have a Dream, The Little Prince, and The Human Genome. Grace Petrie, an English songwriter and folk singer, released a track by the name of The Golden Record. On her 2017 album Heart First Aid Kit, which is a love song based upon the story of Carl Sagan and Anne Druyan, referencing the additions made to the record intended to depict the sound of human beings in love. The 2017 documentary The Farthest, directed by Emma Reynolds, features those who worked on the Golden Record and Voyager missions including Frank Drake, Timothy Ferris, and Nick Sagan. Topic. Publications. Most of the images used on the record reproduced in black and white, together with information about its compilation, can be found in the 1978 book Murmurs of Earth, the Voyager Interstellar Record by Carl Sagan, F. D. Drake, Anne Druyan, Timothy Ferris, John Lomberg, and Linda Salzman. A CD-ROM version was issued by Warner New Media in 1992. Author Anne Druyan, who later married Carl Sagan, wrote about the Voyager record in the epilogue of Sagan's final book Billions and Billions. To celebrate the 40th anniversary of the record, Ozma Records launched a Kickstarter project to release the record contents in LP format as part of a box set also containing a hardcover book, turntable slipmat, and art print. The Kickstarter was successfully funded with over $1.4 million raised. Ozma Records then produced another edition of the three-disc LP vinyl record box set that also includes the audio content of the Golden Record, soft cover book containing the images encoded on the record, images sent back by Voyager, commentary from Ferris, art print, turntable slipmat, and a collector's box. This edition was released in February 2018 along with a 2x CD book edition. In January 2018, Ozma Records Voyager Golden Record, 40th Anniversary Edition, won a Grammy Award for Best Boxed or Limited Edition Package. A book called Hello World, A Time Capsule of Life, the Earth, and Humanity was inspired by Voyager's Golden Record. This book shares videos from around the world to create a time capsule of the planet Earth. <laughs> Topic. Track listing The track listing is as it appears on the 2017 edition released by Ozma Records. Disc 1 Disc 2 Topic. See also Arecibo message Communication with extraterrestrial intelligence Pioneer plaque Time capsule Topic. References Topic. External links The Golden Record. JPL, NASA. The Golden Record Multimedia Showcase. GoldenRecord.org. Voyager's Greetings to the Universe 1977. Re-lab.net. The Making of Voyager Golden Record in 1977, Photos on Flickr Bowie, Lily. The Infinite Voyager, The Golden Record. MIT. Voyager 1 Audio. Internet Archive. Voyager Record Cover. Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum. Voyager Termination Shock. University of Iowa. John Cohen and the Voyager Record. The Celestial Monochord. Cleese, Larry. August 26, 2007. Preserving Ithaca for a Billion Years. PDF. Tompkins Weekly, 1 45. Ithaca, New York. p. 11. Archived from the original PDF on February 28, 2008. Retrieved January 9, 2008. Voyager's Records Wait for Alien Ears. NPR, August 19, 2007. Space, Interview with Anne Druyan on her role in the making of the Voyager Record. 
Radiolab. WNYC. May 12, 2006. The Science Show, Interview with John Lomberg. Radio National. November 19, 2005. Sully, Nicole 2016. Greetings from the Planet of Earth, Accounts of Architecture for an Interstellar Audience on the Voyager Golden Record. PDF. Proceedings of the Society of Architectural Historians, Australia and New Zealand. 33 Gold, 658-668. Voyager Golden Record, 40th Anniversary Edition. Kickstarter. September 2016. What Would Aliens Make of NASA's Voyager? NPR. September 30, 2017.